Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest on the big thunderstorms we are seeing at the moment and we are going to continue to see over the next 24 hours and the coming days as we have a warm plume of air coming up from Spain in North Africa bringing not only warmer and hotter conditions for many but also quite a widespread risk of storms. Now we did see quite a few intense thunderstorms last night. We're seeing a bit of a lull in thunderstorm activity at the moment. Still got a lot of precipitation around from remnants of last night's storms but we're going to see another active period potentially over the course of this evening into early hours of tomorrow morning and it does look like overnight the models have intensified the risk increased the cape amounts and it does look like we could be seeing quite an intense bout this evening and we do now have a yellow warning from the met office for thunderstorms for southern england tonight into tomorrow morning so please do make sure you do take the necessary precautions for these storms and we'll have a look at these in detail in this video and we'll finish by having a look at the longer range just briefly looking at the ensembles to see if anything's happening in the long-term temperature um, and precipitation trends so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now if we do start on the live radar you can see there is quite a bit of precipitation around but most of it is greens which means it's moderate rain some heavy abouts in there some yellows and oranges and reds mixing in but very little in terms of active thunderstorm activity and it's because we have a bit of a lull in activity at the moment and all this precipitation that we're seeing is remnants of storms that have popped off a few hours ago and overnight. Now you can see across northern England where you've got still some precipitation around, some heavier showers across the northwest of Scotland. And that's where we highlighted yesterday increased Cape today. Um, and that's why we're still seeing some heavier showers there. And all that precipitation across northern England, Scotland, all of its patch of precipitation is the remnants of thunderstorms that were in the southwest overnight last night and you can see a lot of shower activity down in central southern england quite a persistent band of moderate to heavy rain and that is from storms popping off in northern france heading northwards uh losing their sort of convective potential and generally turning into just an area of precipitation of course all this precipitation will be fading as it heads northwards still some active activity in some of these showers with heavy abouts of rain some torrential rain in there but we're not seeing the intense lightning activity we were seeing in some of these storms last night the peak area of storms was in the far southwest towards exeter plymouth torquay all the way across to parts of Southampton, Bournemouth, these areas seeing thunderstorm activity. Now, again, it's very iffy how much this thunderstorm activity got on land, but many of these areas were observing flashes. And um, before I went to bed um, late at night, I did see the radar the, the lightning radar and we were seeing flashes on land so we did make landfall with thunderstorms last night again it's difficult to say exactly how widespread they are because all the lightning radars don't have a particularly long um you can't really go back particularly long within they normally only go back a few hours so we can't look exactly what it was like last night but um it was pretty intense and we're just seeing the remnants of some of the storms that were impacting parts of the Ch english channel and northern france now, not only are we seeing heavy showers and storms at the moment, but we do have warmer temperatures. Now, you can see, I'm recording this at around 1pm, and already across the Midlands, northern England, we're already getting into the low 20s, because it's pretty warm. Um, in further southwards, we still have the shower activity, the remnants of those thunderstorms, a little bit cooler. But wherever we see sunshine come out, those temperatures are really going to jump today, up into the mid-20s. So best temperatures, most likely today, in the Midlands and Northern England, because this shower activity in the south was a is a little bit higher than we anticipated a couple of days ago. Now you can see across the near continent, the warmer conditions that are fueling these storms, the very hot air mass we're seeing coming up from the south, and you can see all these yellow patches within it, those are showers and storms popping off within the unstable air mass. Now, these hot conditions could be coming to the UK over the coming days, but as I've said repeatedly over the last few videos, it all is dependent on shower activity. Now, if we didn't see any thunderstorms today, I wouldn't be surprised if we got up into the mid to high 20s for some parts in central southern England, but because we have showers and thunderstorm activity around, with even areas not seeing precipitation, have got increased cloud amounts, it does limit the amount um, of warmer weather we're going to be seeing. 
Now I do just briefly have a look at the Lightning map just to emphasise that you can see very few strikes at the moment. In the last hour you can see some thunderstorm strikes across the north of France, some across central southern England but those are almost an hour ago now. Um, and you can see um, just information that's very useful is this month we've had 1,540 lightning strikes, the last seven days 1,297 and today, so since midnight, 1,000. 111 so you can see most of the lightning strikes over two-thirds of the lightning strikes this month have come in the last sort of 12 hours or so from all these intense storms that we have been seeing now again we'll be checking this again over the next sort of 24 hours seeing how these storms do develop so make sure if you are interested in seeing where these storms are developed not only look on the radar but look on a lightning radar for example this one on netweather or perhaps go into the met office website as well where they also do have a lightning detector as well now if we do have a look at the weather warnings we do have a warning in force for thunderstorms for central southern england now this is not in force yet this is not for any of the shower activity we're seeing at the moment it's for another batch of intense storms tonight from 8 p.m until 5 a.m tomorrow now there's a chance that thunderstorms may cause some flooding and disruption on Sunday night. If we have a look at the further details, of, although the location effect by thunderstorms remains uncertain, so again, there's a lot of uncertainty within this, a few places may experience a combination of heavy rain, frequent lightning, and hail during Sunday night. Should thunderstorms develop, they are likely to move north from the south coast during Sunday evening into parts of South Wales, southern England, and East Anglia overnight for gradually weakening. Again, turning into a bigger mass of just rain through Monday morning further northwards. While some places will remain dry, a few places may see 20 to 30 millimetres of rain fall in less than an hour. So intense amounts, over an inch of rain in an hour with frequent lightning and hail uh, additional hazards. And you can see high impact, low likelihood. Now talking of precipitation, if we actually just go back to the radar for a second. Uh, I forgot to show you... Um, if we have a look at the uh, last 24 hours in terms of precipitation, we'll see where the thunderstorms tracked last night. And you can see those storms here. Across southwest England, you can see all these green belts, yellow belts. These are where intense storms did track. Um, and you can see widespread areas seeing precipitation. And you can see the heaviest rain in the southwest as these storms popped off and then spreading northwards and eastwards as they did sort of dissipate in their intensity. So now if we do have a look at the latest from the shorter range models, seeing what they're showing for the thunderstorm risk tonight and over the next few days. Now, if we do start on the WRF looking at the most unstable Cape values, so the energy available for these storms when they do develop, you can see as I'm recording this around lunchtime, there isn't a lot around. Some across parts of Wales, but we're not seeing too much activity there. And of course, across parts of Western Scotland. And that's where we're seeing some heavier showers at the moment, but nothing too crazy. So we could see maybe some storms develop slightly there and maybe in parts of Wales, but nothing too crazy. And the reason why we're seeing the intense storm, or well, the intense rain, sorry, and heavy precipitation is because you can see across the near continent, increased levels of Cape. So storms are popping off across Northern France, coming over to the channel, reducing in intensity, and just giving us precipitation. But as we head through this evening, increased Cape values come into central southern England and quite intense amounts. This is why we could see them start popping off around midnight or in that morning period from 8 p.m. till 5 a.m. across central southern England, even into parts of the Midlands, East Anglia. Intense storm activity could be seen there. It does spread through, so by sunrise, Storm activity does start to reduce and spread northwards and eastwards, but we could still see some very active precipitation and maybe storms within this. And for tomorrow afternoon, we see again another increased amount of Cape. Not quite as high as over the night period, but across many parts of Ireland, Republic Island, Northern Ireland, and across England and Wales, increased levels of Cape for pop-up storms to develop. Now, beyond that, we do see Cape reduce through Monday night and into Tuesday. Nothing too crazy through Tuesday. A little bit of a lull, potentially, in storm activity. But we do see maybe some more Cape through Tuesday evening, but nothing crazy on the radar at this stage. But, of course, these Cape values can change. You can see little increased amounts, and they could rapidly develop if we do see a little bit of a warmer plume push up. Now, if we do just have a look at the raw precipitation now, you can see as I'm recording this um, around 
midday we're not meant to be forecasted particularly high amounts of precipitation in the south so WRF a little bit off developing those storms potentially across northern Wales and western parts of Scotland over the course of this evening will be very interesting to see if those do come off and you can see activity increasing on the south coast around 6 7 p.m heavy storms taking off and they're spreading northwards you see those oranges potentially lining up very intense storms pushing northwards and eastwards and clearing areas across the coast by around 8 9 a.m pushing northwards more just at general of precipitation as those storms do just turn uh, lighter and again tomorrow afternoon we can see more showers and storms pop off very interesting to see what happens with that though again cape levels are there but we're not seeing anything too crazy on the precipitation charts Beyond that, Tuesday does look like it won't be too bad of a day, some precipitation further westwards, but that's because we have general low pressure pushing in, and as we head through into Monday, um, oh, it does look like the run isn't, oh no, there we go, and then through Wednesday, we do see more precipitation in the west, but nothing too crazy, maybe some heavy rain and some storm activity within that, but again, nothing substantial later this week at this stage, that is one thing we do need to keep an eye on. Now, if we do have a look at the Arpege, have a look at what it's showing for most unstable Cape. You can see nothing too much at the moment, maybe across parts of Western Scotland. So you can see nothing across Wales, unlike the WRF. So this is why you can see it's very dependent on each models, and that's why we still have a lot of uncertainty. You can see across parts of France, just to the bottom of the screen, a lot of Cape, and that is going to transition into central southern England. And you can see increased levels of Cape in around that midnight period for central southern England, in parts of Wales and the Midlands as well. Spreading north as eastwards, turning intense storms, and by tomorrow afternoon, again, increased levels of Cape across central southern England into the Midlands, northern England, maybe parts of Wales, and a lot of Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Beyond that, nothing too crazy in terms of Cape values. Um, so again, our pairs not showing anything too significant for the next few days beyond Monday. Now, if we do have a look at the precipitation, the raw precipitation charts, yeah, I can see increased precipitation in the central southern England. So perhaps if they're a little bit more in line with what we're actually seeing on the live radar, those showers do it do uh, move northwards intensify a little bit and around midnight heavy showers and storms pop off you can see individual cells along the south coast now these are not exactly where they're going to pop off but these are the rough areas along that south coast in around the midnight period intense thunderstorms taking off as it spreads northwards filling out turning more into just precipitation and by tomorrow afternoon could see some more heavy showers and storms pop off across central areas and again precipitation further westwards maybe quite heavy precipitation further westwards but again that's more associated with weather fronts than storm activity but of course mixing it with the hotter air we could see some very heavy rain embedded within that you see those yellows and orange colors so yeah both the short range models uh RPEG and wrf are showing increased precipitation activity and thunderstorm activity tonight and tomorrow and potentially into tomorrow afternoon as well so it could be a very lively next 24 hour period now, if we do have a look at the UK Mass Officer on the model we generally have a look at um, in our day to day videos, you can see around midday showing that precipitation in the south, perhaps not quite as intense and widespread as we're seeing in reality. But as we head through this evening, it dies out a little bit for intense thunderstorm activity starts to take place along the south coast around 10 11 pm, popping off, heading northwards, and you can see quite widespread shower activity. And wherever you see reds and oranges, that's the potential for thunderstorm development and we see those showers pop off overnight intense storms and by around 8 9 a.m not too many reds showing there so not a lot of active thunderstorms but a lot of torrential rain from the remnants of these thunderstorms from their updrafts and we are seeing general um, heavy rain push northwards and again you can see by tomorrow afternoon heavy showers and storms could pop off once again so we could be seeing again more showers and storms tomorrow and then for Tuesday, we can see heavy rain in the west, more associated with the weather front, but it could be very intense within that. Could be even seeing some convection within that, line convection maybe. Um, very intense rain for Tuesday evening and Wednesday, things dying out a little bit. But we could see even more shower and storm activity in the east area. Very heavy rain, stormy rain there um, through Thursday as we do see weather fronts bump into the hot air to our east before things slowly die down a little bit towards Friday.
Now, if we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon could be seeing low 20s across central areas. Again, all dependent on shower activity. So you can see, can see across central southern England, only 15 degrees. Further north, it's getting towards 20 degrees. All is dependent on cloud activity. And it is uh, cloud and storm activity, precipitation, precipitation activity in general. And we're seeing increased levels today than we were anticipating a couple of days ago. That's why the temperatures are a little bit down. And you can see by Monday, we could see seeing those temperatures rise again, maybe 22, 23 degrees. Now, there are pop-off storms potentially across central England, but where we escape those storms, mid-20s is very possible. As we head through to Tuesday, again, mid-20s could be seen with less precipitation in the east. Precipitation in the west across parts of the Republic of Ireland, very chilly, only around low double digits, maybe only high single digits. But eastwards, it's 25, 26 degrees in that hot air very dry so tuesday could be the best day of the week and by wednesday still decent maybe mid 20s but more shower activity potentially coming in there and by thursday starting to cool down 21 22 degrees as we start to see weather fronts push in from the west so yeah still looks like there could be some very warm if not hot weather on the cards but because we have seen increased shower and storm activity than we had anticipated maybe two three four five days ago I did say I did warn that at the time. It does look like um, those temperatures are not going to quite peak as high as we initially anticipated, but the thunderstorm activity is higher than we anticipated three or four days ago. So yeah, yellow warnings in for tonight, and we could be seeing increased storms and general big areas of precipitation. So even if you even if you're not seeing these storms, it does look like there is going to be heavy rain around, and there could still be issues with some localized flooding. Even if you don't see a thunderstorm, you just see remnants of uh, torrential rain. Now, if we do have a look finally at the ensembles, you can see very warm over the next five days as we have this very warm air mass coming up from Spain and North Africa, reducing to around average, slightly above, slightly below, depending on the individual ensemble, all the way um, through to the end of May. Um, and you can see a lot of precipitation spikes over the next five days showing storm activity especially over the next 24 hours and then again later this week um, or this coming week and beyond that not crazy amounts of precipitation but still uh, some spikes there and if we have a look at the ecm wf run see what that is showing again very warm over the next five days and then returning to a round average for the rest of May. So it could still be some warmer in the longer term, warmer weather in the longer term, but nothing too crazy. Some very hot runs, some much cooler runs still in the balance. And we'll have a look at that in more detail over the coming days once the immediate thunderstorm risk does start to die down and we can concentrate a little bit more on the mid to longer range. So it does look like there could be some quite dangerous conditions over the next 24 hours, especially along the south coast and in central southern England, even perhaps in the Midlands and East Anglia could see some storms as well. So please do take care. It could be intense lightning, as the warning said, some, uh, torrential rain, leads of some flooding and maybe some hail as well. Now, luckily, the highest storm risk is overnight, so not going to impact too many people, hopefully, in their days. But... We could still see some storm activity and some quite widespread heavy rain into Monday morning and Monday afternoon. So please do take care out there. If you are interested and you want to know uh, what's happening in the now cast it's sort of situation, do have a look at various radars and lightning radars. I've linked those in the description, the Weather Channel, the Met Office website, NetWeather, all very good websites um, and free online to view. And of course, you can get the Met Office app, which is very good as well. You can look at the past six hour precipitation. So do make sure you do check those out. And of course, with Thunderstorm, I think most people watching this will know this. Weather apps are pretty useless with this. They will, they can sh show no storms and you see heavy storms. They can show heavy storms and you can see nothing because um, they all, all they are they're relying on the last computer model, which, as we've seen today, can be a little bit off, uh, especially in the very very short range. So do make sure if you are relying on it being dry or want to know when a storm or heavy rain may arrive, do check the radar because these storms can be very unpredictable can pop up very quickly and can dissipate very quickly as well so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed make sure you stay safe out there over the next 24 hours and i'll see you again for another video soon